Uh, so I'm going to talk about continuous delivery and Docker and, and Helios. Um, but I guess you guys know Spotify, right? I mean, how many of you know Spotify? I mean, that's, that's good. I don't need to explain you. It's a music streaming service. I think it's the best in the world. When I was introduced to it about three years ago, I went to premium about three days later. I usually don't pay easily, but I was so annoyed with ads, I just started paying right away, and I never regret it since then. It's a beautiful service. You get your playlist, your own music, but if you get tired of your own music, which I did very quickly, very quickly I just started using curated playlists that created by Spotify employees. It's very nice. It's endless stream of music. You can listen for hours and hours. It never stops. But I'm here to talk about continuous delivery, not music. So when continuous delivery appeared on scene about, let's say, four years ago, maybe five years ago, for us and for everyone else, it quickly became fairly obvious that it's not a question about if I do it or when I do it or why I do it. It was obvious we need to do it, continuous delivery. Uh, the question was how? And then, okay, why, why asking how? We have the book. Actually, I happen to have one with me today, right? And the book should supposed to answer this question. Not so, because, you know, this book is heavy. You see, it's... How many people read it completely from, from A to Z? You see, not many. I stopped in the middle, honestly. <laughs> I started, but I, it's, it's just too heavy. It's too many details. And actually, before I, before I came to Spotify, I was thinking, uh, if you talk to me about continuous delivery, well, how you do it? It takes you about a year or two. That's why I put this one, two years. You start, you're building your pipelines, your tests, your your rollback strategy, then you put a dashboard on top of it, and maybe after a year or two, you're done. That, that, that's what I thought. Uh, the thinking when I came to Spotify then, they put me in a team, and I put my first service in production about a week. It was in continuous delivery fashion. Uh, so it's, it's, not, it's, it's not supposed to take you two years. We go back two years, uh, to 2013. Uh, we didn't have much tools. Um, we knew continuous delivery is the thing, but uh, how we use it. We wanted to make it simpler, and uh, back then, remember two years ago, Docker was kind of a nice idea. We know what Docker is today. How many of you are familiar with Docker, actually? Most of you, that's good. Uh, it's obvious in 2015 to talk about Docker and why we need it. Um, but in two years ago, it was us try it. It's, it's a nice, nice tool, maybe, maybe it can help. Then we had this obvious problem what I call NM problem. You have N service, N services, and you want to deploy them on M hosts. So you have this matrix of how you deploy, how you manage it. And um, that's how Helios tool was born. We call it a Docker orchestration framework. Basically, it solves one problem, solves it really well. Given a list of hosts and given a list of services to deploy, it just deploys them there and keeps them running. It's not trying to be over sophisticated. I'll talk about alternatives later but it just does one thing really well and it keeps it very simple on purpose. Now, it was recently featured on GigaOM. There was an interview with uh, one of technical leads at Spotify. And also, any of you follow the Structure Show podcast? Uh, you should, because for me, it's my favorite one. Well, it was also featured in one of the podcasts. And so what is Helios if even GigaOM and podcast talk about it? It's, it's a system built of a couple of simple blocks. Um, Zookeeper keeps all the data about your deployments, and you use CLI, command line tool, to talk to an entity called master, which is just another machine, and the master talks to Zookeeper. And agent, also some other machines, that's where your services will be running, they watch on Zookeeper, watch for changes, and they respond to these changes. So it works very simple. You ask master to deploy a service. This, this information is stored in Zookeeper, and agents pull it down and start a new service. So there are very few verbs or entities you need to understand when you use Helios. It's job is something that defines your, your, your service. It's a definition of the Docker image you want to use, of ports you want to expose, and volumes you want to use, Docker volumes. That's it, I mean, environment variables, anything that's about how you want to run your Docker image. Master is the guy you talk to over CLI. He sends all these queries to the zookeeper and agents pick it up from the zookeeper. And they actually run the jobs. Master doesn't run anything, it's just a communicator from, from your CLI to zookeeper and from there to agents. And obviously none of this has to be a single point of failure. So you can have a zookeeper cluster, obviously that's easy, that's, that's how zookeeper works. But you can have also multiple agents and multiple masters. In our case, we use about four or five master instances, even though they do nothing, but we still duplicate them 
just in case. Uh, no? No, there's no need. We just, you, I, I, we use DNS as a records. I, I, I'll, yes, it, it's kind of load balancing, but there's no load balance and entity, yes. So we just use masters and they talk to the keeper. Same, same thing, it's just duplicated. And uh, to show you how this whole thing works, I developed a simple service called them echo service. And what it does, you can run it as easily as docker run minus p Evgeny G echo. It just echoes back your HTTP requests and also logs them. So if you have a something that sends HTTP requests, you want to see what is sent, you just can send them to this echo service and it will log them and you can see what's actually sent. And once you have it, it's a, I forgot to mention, it's a Spring Boot service using JT embedded JT. It was a Gradle project, very simple one. Also on GitHub, uh, the link will appear later. Once you have the service, you can use uh, any extension to send the request and, and and see the, 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 the headers, the parameters, the anything. And I have it running. Let's switch to my virtual box. Uh, right now I have one Helios master and two Helios agents running in my virtual box. And let's try to deploy this service. Okay, let's clean up. So you have three consoles here. Uh, the console on the top and in the middle, there are, these are two agents. And uh, the, the bigger console is my CLI. So what I'm going to do uh, on the both agents, I'm going to write, run watch the Docker PS for every second. So we see what's going on with Docker. And now I see like this, this was we're going to operate Helios commands. And you'll see it's very simple. So first, what I'm going to use is, is alias to H, uh, Helios dash Z, uh, Helios master and the port. That's how you communicate to the master. So from now on, I can just use Helios, not, not his, hosts. And we can see that Helios tells me we have right now two agents running. I can ask Helios, okay, what are the jobs defined? So there's no, no jobs at the moment. So let's create one. So I created the job. Let's go over the definition. Uh, this is the name of the job, echo v1. It's a convention. Job named echo version one. This is the Docker image that I want to use for this job. These are the ports I expose. And this is the register I want to use it. I want to register it on the name echo. We'll talk about services discovery and registration later. So far still nothing happened. You see Docker PS shows empty. For that I need to deploy it. So definition of job is like definition of job in Jenkins maybe. Now job is defined but nobody run it yet. So this is the step I say Helios deploy job echo and list of agents I want to deploy it to. In my case it's Helios agent one and Helios agent two. I deploy and after a while it appears here and um, here is agent two picked it up and agent one, come on. Well, what it does uh, when this, the command is sent, it does uh, docker pool for the image and uh, depending on the network, it can be a bit sleepy, but actually it responds and now we have this uh, docker PS shows us the job running and we can see the ports mapping, we can see the image used and right now, how about I just curl it so I'm going to curl it on port 8080. I have this response coming from one of the agents. Uh, this was my request. These were the headers. You can see what user agent curl is using. Uh, locale send parameters. Now what I'm going to do, I want to kill one of these containers and see what, what, what happens next. What's your guess? What happens if I docker stop one of these guys? Right, that's right. Uh, SSH. So I need to copy paste this container ID. Okay, so this guy was killed. I think within 10 seconds it comes up again. Uh, let's see, one, two, three, four, five. It also depends on the network and how Helios is fast. Six, seven, <laughs> we come into 10. Almost eight. It turned on the Wi-Fi again. Um, nine. Maybe I have questions. <laughs> Actually, yes. If you have a question now, you know what? I'll talk about Helios in, in Israel. Uh, it's not Helios and Spotify in Israel because it takes time. I don't know why. It, it will respond. So to launch in every country takes time. It's not that Spotify doesn't want to be in Israel. 
It just to come to every country it takes a lot of neg 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 negotiation with the records, com with labels. And it's come very, very hard. I mean, even to launch in the US took about three years. And here's the guy. <laughs> Normally it takes five seconds, but Wi Fi and all, you know. So to come through Israel, we'll take another round of negotiation with all the records that we have agreements with. So it just takes time. And we don't know. We engineers have no idea when they launch in every country. I mean, if you, talk, if you happen to stumble into one of marketing guys, ask them. I, I honestly don't know. Okay, so um, now we have this container. It's running. It can be killed. If it crashes, then it's restarted, usually faster than that, and it keeps running. Now I can just undeploy this job, and it goes away. And then I can remove it. And if I do Helios jobs now, it shows me empty. So you see Helios create a job, Helios deploy a job to, to agents, and Helios undeploy, and Helios remove. Very simple set. The other commands, Helios inspect, actually, I forgot to show this one. If I create a job, then I say inspect job echo dash dash JSON. It shows me JSON, which I can save in a repo, and then I don't need to run this create long command. I just say create from this JSON file, and this JSON specifies all my job definitions. Again, image to use, post to expose, environment variables, health checks, or whatnot. So there's other commands, but you don't need to use all of them. Four, four, four five commands is enough. Um, so in a job, you see I have specified here explicitly uh, external port. Now, this is not recommended actually, because then if you deploy this job on the same host, you'll have port collision. So normally external port is not specified. You put null here. So what happens, Helios picks up some port, but then how do you know which port it is? And I have slide for that. It's called service discovery. That's what the server records are for. We'll get them, yes. But normally it's just since it's a demo, I have uh, I need to know this port in advance. Uh, I, I'm just hard-coded it. Normally, you don't do it. Hmm? Why not? Yeah. All right. So uh, these are the set of commands. Just quick recap. Host, jobs, tells you what's going on, which hosts I have, which jobs I have, create, deploy, status, you can run the status of this. You can see, okay, where is my job actually deployed? Or on this host, what job is it running? And when you think you're done, or when you want to upgrade a, a, a container on a, simple, on, a, on a certain host, you just say undeploy and, and remove the job definition. And it's uh, super easy to run. All you need from your environment is Java 7 or Java 8, uh, Zookeeper, and that's it. You can run it locally on your laptop. Uh, if you check out uh, uh, the project from GitHub and you build it with Maven, then there you can just run slash bin slash Helios master, slash bin slash Helios agent, and it just starts running. You need to have Zookeeper locally on your machine, but that's it, that's the only requirement. I run it in VirtualBox. Um, you can run master agent on the same machine. And Zookeeper, I, I call it combined, yes, it does have to be separated on three different machines. Better be in production, yes, but for demos, for trying out, you just put it on a single machine, yes. Um, that's an entity that translates CLI to, to Zookeeper commands. Either way, so you have to put this logic into CLI. Yeah. I guess they just was more convenient. So one guy of the development, I'm not the team that develops Helios, but the guy that develops it, he says, well, it shouldn't be called master at all because it does nothing, just sends command to Zookeeper. Master is a bad name, but that's the name we started with and we keep using this name. It's just a translation layer Abs between the, the commands and... Absolutely right, yes. So it's not given any special commands, of it. it has no logic, it has no brain of let's think what we do. No, it's just translator. So you can run them in combined mode, and you can run them as Docker containers, uh, which is a sub-project we're working on called Helio Standalone. So you, can, you don't have to install, let's say, Zookeeper Java, you just run Helios Master as a container, Helios Agent as a container. And obviously you can run them in any cloud environment. That's what's, that's what's good about it, it's very cloud agnostic. Any set of machines that can communicate, can talk between themselves, can run Java and Zookeeper, it will work. Now let's take a more realistic uh, demo of what I say commit to deploy on AWS. So I have a list of four machines on AWS. 
one master, two agents, and one Jenkins. And one of the agents, I can use it to send a query. And I get a response, all is well. This is what's get response, let's try post. This key value parameters, send it. Oh, all is well. But then somebody tells me, you know what, we don't get any raw body. When you send a, a body in the post request, we don't get it. I say, how come? Let's try it. Let's put in the body something like, hello, DevCon, and send it. Hmm, right, I see no body. Oh, that needs to be fixed. We go to the code, we start looking at the code, and then we come to this. Huh, it was commented out, the entire section of sending body. So let's uncomment it, and just commit it. Say body is displayed and commit and push. Then let's see how our Jenkins is doing. It picked up the change. A couple of refreshes. Just a little thing with Jenkins. Okay, now we can see the status. Um, yeah, the Gradle built the, the, the tar file and now we do the Docker build. Now we build the, the image. The image was built, then we tag it with the latest tag. Um, we get the list of images. And uh, then we do Docker push to bin tray. That's a good point, by the way. Did you know, you know about bin tray and JFrog? No, the Israeli company. Oh, so you should know. So Bintray is a service for distributing your binaries. What I didn't know until a couple of days ago, that they also can host your Docker images in a public repo. So I was complaining on Twitter that Docker Hub is terribly slow, and it's my major pain point in all the demos. And one of the JFrog guys told me just, why aren't you using Bintray? And I tried it, and it worked. <laughs> so, uh, so I'm pushing not to Docker Hub, I'm pushing to Bintray, and it works much, much faster. See, it took about 20 plus seconds. With Docker Hub, it takes maybe 40 seconds sometimes. And once I pushed it, I do all the same Helios commands. Uh, you see I do Helios undeploy the previous version. I do Helios create of the job. And eventually we do, where is Helios deploy command? It's somewhere here. Helios jobs, right? And yeah, Helios deploy. So this is the command that said, okay, now we built an image, we pushed it, let's deploy it. Then it, Pulls a bit and pulls, uh, it shows you the status of the image, pulling image, pulling image, and after five seconds, another pulling image, then it says, oh, running. Now image is running. Now if you come here and send the same request, ah, body is here. Hello, DevCon. Now, uh, so this is, this is kind of continuous delivery. You commit, you push, you build a new image, and we deploy it. We undeploy the previous version. Of course, you don't undeploy your previous version from all the hosts. You take host, you take host in, in, in parts. So you take first part, you undeploy, you replace. Take another part, and deploy, you replace. Can you that? We have a helper tool for that, but it's not part of the Helios yet. We, we have a tool built on top of Helios, we call it Helios Helper, so that you don't run all these Helios low level commands. You normally say just Helios deploy, and it does undeploy, deploy, ta -ta -ta, all this, all this thing for you. It's not part of open source project yet, maybe it will become later. Now the service discovery, that, that, that's the important part. So once you deploy the service, how do you know where it runs? And we, I told you it's not a good thing to hard code your external port, uh, so we use DNS SRV records for that. First of all, Helios itself, the master, can be used with SRV records uh, in a simpler way. So I used to, I, in the very beginning, I put an alias for Helios-Z and master and the port, and if you put um, this, this SRV record, underscore Helios, underscore HTTP, uh, name of your domain, you can just use then Helios-D domain. Like, let me show you. I can just say Helios-DVM, that's my local domain, hosts. It's, you don't have to use Helios-Z, but for that it requires to have this Helios HTTP and, uh, server record. But that's for Helios master itself, to, to simplify the CLI. For the services, you made this part pluggable. 
Why? Because we use internally a name service that we can't expose. So we had to make this part pluggable uh, for other people to use. So right now you can use SkyDNS. It's a DNS server backed by etcd. We can use console. It's a discovery service that also exposes records through SRV records. So for example, if you use SkyDNS, you can then uh, run the query, uh, this one, host of type SRV and name of your service, your protocol, your domain, and it gives you uh, where the service is running and the port number. So that's why you get your port when you don't hard code it. You use DNS query. You, you ask for a survey query for your, you send a survey query for your service and you get a host and a port where it's running. So your clients are supposed to be able to integrate with DNS queries. That's a way to announce and publish services. If you use not uh, SkyDNS but uh, console uh, with Helios, as I mentioned, it's pluggable, you just swap a, swap a plugin. Use slightly different query, but it's also a survey query. You say echo, name of your service, then you say service, it's a keyword in console, then your domain, and then you can also specify this to your DNS server. And it goes, gives you the same. These are Amazon machines where the service is running at the moment. So this is the, this is the discovery. Uh, and there's so many things we want to do about Helios. Uh, as I say, CD, continuous delivery, it's not a destination, it's a journey. It means you don't get there and you stop. You keep working on it, and we keep it ready on Helios nonstop. So I think we want to improve about Helios is um, visualization. H how do you know what, what's running at the moment? Of course, you can do CLI, but that's not the way to, to display information. So right now, we work hard on building uh, dashboards and uh, think, think systems that show you uh, respond to events, and you can be notified about these events, what was deployed where, by whom. Did it go through the pull request? Did it go through the uh, code review? ACLs. So right now, if you ask me, w w what happens if I just stop the production container? Uh, what do you think will happen? Hmm? Well, it just stops. Yeah, it's, it's simple. Same, same thing as I just did Docker stop. So um, Helios already has uh, some simple support for access control lists. So you can just go to the machine and say Helios undeploy production service. You'll have to specify some password. Obviously, it's not for hackers because it's run in the internal network, which is trusted and protected. It's mainly for typos. Because if you made a typo and you say and deploy and you just make an error in the service name, you can kick somebody else's service from production. So we, we put this ACL, but it will be in a more improved version soon. Rolling updates. We want to build this uh, support, as you mentioned, I've mentioned about this. Yeah, somebody here about uh, updates and portions. So you take a third of your uh, fleet, then another third, then another third. We want to make it a built-in feature. Rollbacks. What happens if you make a Helios deploy, and then it fails. So today it just stops. And the assumption is, well, it stops, and you're supposed to go and take a look why, why deployment failed. Maybe the, the, the image keeps crashing when it started, maybe something else. And one idea that can happen is that we put back automatically a previous version, which may, not, which may be a good idea or not so good idea, depending on who you ask, but it's something we, we discuss internally. Secrets. How do you expose secrets in the Docker container? Right now, we do it through volumes, and you put secret files on the machine with Puppet, but we don't like this solution. We work on, on, a, on a better system. Uh, health checks. So right now, you give it an image, it just pushes it and announces the, the DNS SRV record without even checking, is it running at all? So yes, there is a, there is a mechanism for health checking. You, actually, you provide this mechanism, and Helios can run your health check script, Later, it will become part of job definition, so you can specify TCP port, and port number, or HTTP request to send, and unless this health check says okay, uh, service will not be announced in DNS records. So it's only announced and, gets, and starts getting real traffic when it's totally healthy and up and running. For example, this simple echo service takes about six, seven seconds to start. And it's a Spring Boot minimalistic service, six seconds, I need to wait until it's actually accepts, accepting requests. Log segregation and resource limiting. You want to make sure that all your logs from all your containers are aggregated in some, through log stash in some Kibana dashboard maybe, which is very important for troubleshooting. If, if you see that your service is misbehaving, you want to see the actual logs. Today you'll have to go to the machine, maybe run Docker exec or Docker logs. And, and resource limiting, we'll talk about, well, how do I limit resources for 
if my services are co-located. Right now, we run only one container per host. That's by design, that, 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 that's, that's what we need. But later, if you, if you decide to run several Docker containers on the same machine, we need to think about resource limiting. Now, are there any alternatives? Two years ago, there weren't many. Today, there are just plenty of them. First, Docker itself has Docker Swarm and Docker Compose that aggregate services together. AWS EC2 Container Service does very similar things to, to Helios. Kubernetes runs on Google, Apache Mesos, CoreOS fleets, services like Panamax Flynn, Giant Swarm. I just learned about Giant Swarm two days ago myself. So many alternatives. So Helios, maybe not the best tool, but it's m one of the simplest I used. And it just, as I mentioned in the very beginning, it does one thing really well. Just Helios create, Helios deploy, and you're done. If you'd like none of them, uh, the traditional configuration management tools, such as Ansible, Puppet, or Chef, just you can use them as well to orchestrate your, your Docker commands. And there is an Ansible module for, for Docker. And some resources for, for you to use. Um, the, the project on, on GitHub in Spotify, uh, there's a Vagrant file. If you want to just Vagrant up, you'll have the Helios master with the Zookeeper and the agents in it. If you don't want to use this Vagrant file, I put uh, some playbooks that you can use Ansible to, um, to orchestrate any of your machines to become either master or, or agent. Uh, and then there's two plugins that provide support for registration with SkyDNS, which was developed by Spotify guys, or there's a community developed plugin for console, which you can use. And by the way, in these playbooks, there's a, a Boolean flag, which one you want to use. You want to use SkyDNS or you want to use console, just a Boolean flag, and it just announces the service slightly differently. Console has a more verbose DNS uh, syntax. And there's the app service itself. You can always use it if you want some echo in back of HTTP requests. Which brings me to the final part of this presentation. I answered some questions about Israel and Spotify, but what if you have any other questions? You like it? Yeah, very much. Try it out, try it out. Because actually when I came, I said, why, why do we need Helios? Let, let, let's use Kubernetes. I mean, why, why develop our own tool if there's other tools available? Within time, I, I, I trusted Helios. I said, maybe it's not a good idea to, to throw it away. Maybe it's a good tool. And we keep using it. We, are, we have no plans to, to, to throw it away. We have no plans to stop developing it. It's, it's, it's very much in production. It runs hundreds of, of containers in production. It does a job well. And we're not really competing with Kubernetes. We're not trying to say use us and not Kubernetes. Use whatever works for you. It definitely works for us. Why would you need the uh, Ansible or Chef or anything of that sort when you have that kind of system? I mean, you can uh, spawn new uh, services, microservices. That's correct. So easily. I just put this as an alternative. I mean, that was the last bottom of all. If, if you want to use now, because it's, some people just say, well, it's one more tool to learn. I don't want it. So I say, well, in the, in the, in the worst case, you want to learn no tool, just use Ansible. And Ansible will do Docker start for you. Of course, I believe using tools like Helios or Kubernetes is a much simpler way. Although I, I'm, I'm a big fan of Ansible myself. That's why I put these playbooks for you, too, if you want to try out Helios. There was a question here. It's for production, yes. Yeah. About several hundreds of services run in production. My, my, my team is working on continuous delivery for backend teams. So that, that's where we concentrate. Um, and yes, not, not everyone has switched. Spotify works in lots of autonomous groups. We call them squads. And we can't force on everyone, go use Helios. Because if they don't want to use Helios, some of them refuse to use Helios. They say, well, it's not good for us. We have Puppet. And we, do, we orchestrate machines with Puppet. So, OK, it's up to you. But many teams do use it and use it very happily. Try it, your feedback is welcome. It gets, well, I, I personally push some pull requests to the project, my documentation, but uh, it's open, open source by all means. Try it, use it, pull request it, and when Spotify comes to Israel, finally, you'll have a music for every moment. And you see your party. I actually very big fan of focus playlists when I work at night, I mean, nothing like focus playlist, uh, so you not feel bored. <laughs> That's it for me, thank you guys.